Welcome to Outlier On Air. We are privileged to be here with Alexandra Fleur from Critique It, which is a technology company that works out of the We Labs co-working space in Long Beach, California. So thank you so much for joining us. We Thanks appreciate so it. Welcome. So I would love to pick your brain a little bit and ask you, uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about Critique It and who you are and how you got into this business. Um, Critique It came out of my personal need, um, doing postgraduate studies in creative writing. I really enjoyed the kind of engagement you get when you're talking to people face to face, but when you're working on a large novel or a document, or teams are remote, that's really hard to do, sure. and um, just hated the process of email and managing documents and track changes, it was just a mess, mm -hmm. and I just wanted a way to highlight what I wanted and people to talk. And so hmm. we created a technology that allows people to share any kind of content, um, images, movies, schematics, documents, and um, talk in them. Really? We text, audio, video in, in that content. So what began as my personal passion for just wanting feedback on a middle grade novel ended up turning yes. into a workflow solution for like forensic science or higher education. Wow. So how long ago did you start the project? Uh, six years ago. Really? Wow. Still going strong. It's been, yeah, it's been quite, quite the adventure. I, I, <laughs> if you told me seven years ago, oh, you, you know, you're going to start a startup, you're going to have an S Corp, you're going to have shares, you're going to be a technology company, I would have just laughed in your face. Really? That was nowhere in my wheelhouse when I got started. But when you have a need and you find a way to fill it, then you find a way to monetize it, there you go. Then you have a corporation. Yeah. yeah exactly. So exactly. so it sounds easy now. What, six years later, did you say? Five <laughs> years later? But take us through a little bit how you built that. I mean, I know it can be difficult to get started when you don't quite know where to go or what steps to take. I, I was really fortunate because the problem that I see um, in talking to other ideators or visionaries is how you find that partnership. Mm -hmm. And I was not looking for partnership. I was mm -hmm. just frustrated about my problem, was talking to a lot of people about this vision that I had for how we should interact with content. Okay. And so um, I've been really fortunate to, to have a business partner who's on the technology side mm -hmm. and... The problem ended up being a much more difficult problem to solve from the mm -hmm. technology standpoint than you okay. could possibly have imagined. Really? Um, and then to be on the forefront, um, some of the barriers that we faced like in the very beginning was people were like, yeah, it sounds like a great idea. I mean, who, who wouldn't want to take any document, not need the software, yeah. and leave your voice in it? Sure. Who wouldn't want that? And they're like, well, there's no way you thought of something no one had. <laughs> but you <laughs> that was truly the first had? barrier we truly had and we're still racing you know looking over our shoulders but um have built a lot of beautiful partnerships with universities mm. with other um, programmers and coders and people in the especially the academic world who are passionate about collaborating together in content sure and um yeah it's just been a joy wow. and quite quite the wild ride Outliers, are you chomping at the bit to get your products and services out to the world and really boost your sales? Two of the most common worries that we hear from entrepreneurs at all levels are handling social media and search engine optimization. We all know that there are services out there to provide this for you, but the question is who do you trust with your brand and your valuable cash to do it right? If you've heard my friend Anthony Tran from Marketing Access Pass on Outlier On Air before, you'll know that he is a true expert. After he presented on Outlier On Air, we got an awesome response because his knowledge really resonates with entrepreneurs. Anthony and his team at Marketing Access Pass provide done-for-you services for social media and SEO so that you can focus your efforts on the strategic activities of your business. We also have negotiated great rates for outliers, so go to outliermagazine.co and click on resources at the top to take control of your social media and search engine optimization today. Wow. So I... I, uh, I've heard before, if you're going to have any type of technology company, you must have one of the co-founders needs to be a tech co-founder. Do you agree? Absolutely. 
So then you have, you don't have to, you've got, you're both all in, then you don't necessarily have to worry about, oh, how am I going to pay that person? What happens if I run out of money? How do I compensate them? So it sounds like a great partnership. Absolutely. Complimentary it, it, skill sets. It right? had to be, yeah. So yeah. I, I took care of every aspect of the business that was not tech related. Um, my vision on how I felt the UI should work or how, how we would connect um, is what kicked it off. And then when you bring other people into your team, mm -hmm. um, their skills maximize what you're doing. Mm. So my first team of programmers just blew my mind. Really? Like, took what I had started with and, and took it here. And every team that we've had since has, has brought their unique individuality to it. And um, our partnerships with universities, same thing, professors working mm. on the ground with their students and they'll... You know, call and say, "Hey, I've I've got this idea," and it's rare for someone to come up with an idea we have not thought of because yeah. we've been chewing <laughs> on you know document collaboration for uh, wow. years. But but yeah, they'll spark something and everybody's brains light up. So it's cool. it's a beautiful ends up being a beautiful partnership with many institutions and organizations. Yeah. And, you know, people passionate over the same same thing. So how do you monetize it? That was one of our biggest challenges yeah. of really understanding our business model, um, having a product that wasn't on the market yet. So explaining to people, and mm -hmm. they're like, "Well, I've got email." I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> right. But that's like, nowhere near near. Yeah, as good. exactly. Yeah. Or I use word track changes. I'm like, well, what if you're an architect? Yeah. What if you're in forensic science? Yeah. Right. So we just wanted a a really um, what's the word software agnostic mm -hmm. system, so it sure. doesn't matter who works on what kind of software you can share, and um, so finding a business model for that was our biggest challenge. Um, we decided not to be consumer-facing, mm -hmm. I will, oh, okay. but we're not consumer-facing, and what, what worked for us was a partnership with existing technology companies, okay. so corporations that have an existing product, um, a large market base. They have um, a sales force, customer service, and they're looking to give their customers more. They license with us to use our technology okay. to provide that, that extra um, benefit. So our first partnership with, uh, was with um, WW Norton Publishing, and they provide professors with our product with the textbook, with the hmm. Norton Siegel handbook. Okay. So professors can open a student paper, literally highlight and talk to them. I see. On their own time. Wow. You That's... know, and from anywhere. Yeah. Have a conversation, just like you would face-to-face, -face, but they don't have that ability. You don't have that time. Right. And so they can have personal conversations with students in a paper and then collect, uh, connect directly to the W.W. Norton textbook. So, so it seems like the business to business relationship has been really key in helping you helping you monetize because I think a lot of times in technology companies we think consumer facing automatically we think oh subscription based or something like that but has that really been uh, a boon to you to do B two B yes because then um, the burden we had of being bootstrapped and then you think oh my goodness I have to be um, efficient at customer service. I have mm -hmm. to have this robust sales and then I've got yeah. to have all the capital to go behind that. It's yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. But then you um, you realize that you can partner with someone and they're like, we have customers. We need to bring them mm. value. We love what you do. Great. Then you're sharing, you're sharing um, partnership and everybody benefits. It's a win for them because mm -hmm. they get a quality product. Um, they're Customers are happy. They get greater access to the textbook because that's an, an issue that publishing has is how, right. how do we um, use digital textbooks. And so our product allows the use of digital textbooks, um, makes the professor's job a lot easier, and, and it's a win-win all the way because yeah. we're sharing in that responsibility. So I'm sure there's already consumers that are listening that are like, I want that. I, so are you going to the consumer I market think, at some point? Yes, I'm dying to do that. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the initial the, the initial seed idea was about me being a writer wanting feedback right. from other writers. Sure. And I we get people write in all the time asking yeah. and I'm like, Oh, we're not there yet. They're like, yeah. it's all here and I'm like, that was my original dream. So um, we will, and my my goal is to launch it with um, a tablet app as well. Oh, nice. You can carry it with yes. you and 
connect writing groups together, connect dissertation groups together, and just yep. let any team that wants to collaborate do so. Right. So, yeah, that's, that's mm. like, I'm waiting. It, yeah. It'll happen. It'll happen for sure, and it's going to be beautiful because, um, yeah. Yeah, so. that's great. So you mentioned that you, you are bootstrapped. So you never went out and got funding from a VC or anywhere? No. Wow, that's we, impressive. Yeah, uh, <laughs> friends and family funding in 2008 when the market downturn yeah. happened. Yeah. And everybody thought we were crazy. They said, you know, are you insane? And um, we tapped into money that was there and available yeah. when the angel and the VC funding shut down okay. at the downturn. Gotcha. So I I ran into a lot of seasoned CEOs who had a lot of wins behind them, but yeah. were in that Series A stage at the okay. time, and gotcha. everything shut. And so wow. we were really fortunate to be just tapping into um, other funding, uh -huh. and um, and that's where a great technologist comes in, um, the ability to tightly strategize, to right. make absolutely every moment count, right. is what helped us sustain. And we figured if we could survive an economic downturn and do a fundraise and, yep. and kick this off, that there were many companies that couldn't. Wow. And that they'd fall to the wayside and we Absolutely. survived. Yeah. So. so do you mind if I, ask, if I ask you, how long did it take until you were cash flow positive in your business now that you've been going for? Probably five years. Five years. So that's, you're six years in? You're six years in. Wow. Yeah. So you just and have to it stick it up. And it was that switch-in model. Okay. It was that first partnership with W.W. W. Norton. That okay. Once that partnership got rolling and yeah. we could see how it worked, then the light bulb goes off and you see how that can be uh, applied to other industries and other corporations. And then so you can start it was a matter of just figuring out who they were and who we should be talking to next. So um, we're in forensic science and like arts and entertainment for a film studio oh, nice. management. Um, same model yeah. of who has an audience, who needs to collaborate on documents. We have the technology and that's partner together. Fantastic, fantastic. So if you were to mentor our entrepreneurs who are watching and listening right now and you were to give them one piece of advice... What would it be? I'm opening it up so it can be general, but something you maybe have really struggled with or learned that you'd like to share. Ask for help. I think, um, I don't know if it's, I, I guess every entrepreneur has like this streak of stubbornness to you, right? Let's like, hope so, right? right? <laughs> you got to. Oh my gosh. Like, I had no idea. Yeah. Um, but to just be open to pulling in as many people into your space as possible and asking for help. We didn't know what a board should look like. We didn't yeah. know, right? Yeah. For us, this was our first startup. Yeah. So. And there are so many mentors out there or experts oh, out there that are willing, that want to help. The community so. is beautiful. And I'd have to say that that's something that has struck me. Mm -hmm. The entrepreneurial and like technology community is beautiful. So do you think this co-working space is one way to kind of reach out in that way, like oh, you're talking absolutely. about? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the energy that you get from other people, the fact that there are other entrepreneurs struggling the way that you do and yeah. you need to take you know step back my team is remote so all my okay. programmers work together in one area my business partner works in a different area so it was really important for me that I'm surrounded by people doing similar things sure and um yeah so you're not alone and then yeah. we're all bootstrapped so we're all freelancing and uh. having you know jobs on the side and working together to make our companies and our projects better Fantastic. I really appreciate you sharing your product. Is there any way that we can get a glimpse of it? Um, do you have a website or something like oh, that? Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, www.critiquit.com. Critiquit.com. And if our audience wants to ask you a question or get in touch with you, how could they do that? Yeah, if you just hit the, I think there's a button there where you can query for info, okay. but I'm at alexa at critiquit.com. Okay, great. And, um, well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you.